Cobalt blue, deeply clear, surrounded entirely by the mountains of the Sierra Nevada, Lake Tahoe is a national treasure. It's the largest alpine lake in North America. People from near and afar feel keenly passionate about its protection. Now, close to three million visitors a year. After the 1960 Winter Olympics at Squaw Valley, Tahoe became a major tourist attraction. Damage to the lake soon became noticeable. Decline in the lake's clarity raised the alarm. Dr. Charles Goldman of UC Davis used Secchi disks to quantify the problem. This catalyzed a movement to use science and regional planning to reduce human impacts on the lake. Contributing to this effort, the U.S. Geological Survey is delivering a range of science through its hydrologists, geologists, geographers, biologists, computer modeling experts, and others. The USGS provides a wide range of consistent, reliable, long-term data and maps that are crucial for evaluating and managing the lake and basin. Since the 1980s, in cooperation with its partners, the USGS has been doing repeated sampling of 10 of 63 streams entering the lake. Well, one of the big concerns up at Tahoe is what are the amounts of nutrients and suspended sediment entering the lake from the streams? So by monitoring the 10 streams, we're able to come up with estimates for the amount of nutrients and suspended sediment that enters Lake Tahoe from all the streams. It's a long-term effort to understand exactly what's entering the lake. Samples are collected and quickly delivered to labs at the Tahoe Environmental Research Center for analysis. When it became clear that two-stroke jet skis were dumping polluting organic compounds into the lake, they were banned in 1999. Now, in cooperation with the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency, regular samples are collected during boating season and shipped to the USGS Water Analysis Lab in Denver. They're analyzed for extremely low levels of boat fuel components. Today we're sampling for benzene, all gasoline related compounds that come off from boating. We're out here for the pre-boating season to give a baseline what's here during most of the off boating season and we'll come out here six more times during the boating season and have major holiday periods to see what's going on and we've been doing this since they banned the jet skis in 1999 and following the concentrations of all organic compounds in the lake and they have come way down from what they were before the ban we do see a slight increase during the major boating season like the major holidays but then it comes right back down in october and things are back clean as can be Delivering round-the-clock data are USGS stream gauges on several streams entering Lake Tahoe and on the Truckee River leaving the lake and a gauge on the lake itself. These are essential to water management in the Tahoe Basin and downstream. The stream gauges record the vertical rise or drop of water levels and deliver their data via satellite. And it has some intakes plumbed into the creek so it brings the water from the creek into the gauge, into the stilling well, and I have a float on in, inside the well that goes up and down with the water level, and the gauge records it every 15 minutes. This one's mainly used for the alert for any sort of flood issues, and it's also used for the amount of water that's entering Truckee, so the Federal Water Master can gauge how much water he needs to allocate. We have to have USGS data to do what we do. I am Chad Blanchard and I'm the Chief Deputy Water Master for the United States District Court Water Master's Office. From 6 in the morning till about midnight and go to bed, constantly looking at it at work and at home. The Truckee River is one of the most litigated rivers in the country or possibly the world. 
We were created to enforce two federal court decrees that basically divvied up the water rights and we need the USGS data to be able to meet those requirements. Many of the USGS stream gauges also measure and record water quality information, things like turbidity, specific conductance, pH, and temperature. Combined, the stream gauge data keeps the region informed on its most precious and potentially hazardous resource, water. We have urban and suburban use here, and the network of gauges really gives us a good view of what's going on. What happens in Incline Village on the gauges is a lot different than what happens on the west shore and what happens on the east shore, and the timing's different, the flows are different, and it really gives us a good view of what's coming into the lake. It's long-term data with a real and immediate impact. One of the great visual and scientific products developed for the basin over the past 15 years is the USGS map of the lake floor. Until this, no one knew what the lake bottom looked like. The bathymetry involved 60 million soundings or individual depth measurements of the deep parts of the lake. We used a system called the multi-beam echo sounder. In Lake Tahoe, it was about every four seconds as the boat moved along, we sent out a, a ping, we call it, sent out the sound and then listened. And then four seconds later, we sent sound out again. And we just kept moving back and forth like you'd mow the lawn, uh, making sure we overlapped it so we didn't have gaps. And uh, it took about 10 days and we had the whole thing mapped. And you can put it all together into a surface and actually begin to understand the processes that are going on on the lake floor. Yeah, so one of the great things about multi-beam bathymetry or multi-beam technology is that it's three-dimensional. That you have a latitude, a longitude, and you have a depth. And so uh, with those three values, you can generate three-dimensional images on a computer screen, generate fly-throughs. Um, you can interrogate the data. It's not just a pretty picture, it's an analytical tool. And no one expected what I found. What I found was this astounding landslide. Half the west side of the lake had caved in in the past. The blinders were suddenly removed, and there now is the lake bed in 3D. More recently, USGS scientists have spearheaded the effort to use aerial LIDAR to map the ground surface over the entire basin. Using a computer program, we can strip out that vegetative cover and reveal the bare earth. This is very clearly an active fault. And for many years, these faults have been debated whether they even exist. And using this new LiDAR technology, we're able to clearly show that, yes, there are active faults on the west side of Lake Tahoe. Aerial photographs taken over the past century have been the focus of USGS geographers. Their work provides an instructive history lesson on Tahoe's past. Aerial photography really gives you the power to go back in time. We took old aerial photos for 1940, 1969, and 1987. We can actually scroll through from 1940 to the present time, and you can see the data that we actually created and see how much changes actually occurred from 1940 on. The dramatic data is so easy to access not just for land managers, but for anybody, that Google Earth used it as their first historical imagery sample. Then it was featured in the New York Times. That's a view of the past to present. What about the future? Over 80% of land in the basin is owned by the U.S. Forest Service and will never be developed. But what about the rest? there are 6,000 parcels available for some form of development or planned use. But what is the best use? USGS geographers have developed the novel New Tahoe Land Use Simulation Model for the Tahoe Basin. It's being implemented by the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency. The model can project out fates of different land uses over time, whether there's a house, whether there's a hotel, whether there's a park, or open space, it can help inform what the future's landscape might look like. And then you can take that outcome and relate it to other things like fire modeling or areas that are sensitive for water quality. So you can do some post analysis from the output of the tool. It can project 20 years into the future results of choices made today. What's interesting is that most of the private land ownership is down closer towards the lake where 
things are more sensitive and the uses are more important in terms of the overall concern for the Lake Tahoe Basin, which is the water clarity of the lake. So in the decision support tool, it's really trying to address this balance of, well, where is it okay to develop and where is it not so okay to develop? The goal? To make better choices for Tahoe's future. This future does hold real threats from the continued human presence in the basin and from looming factors such as climate change. In Tahoe, we're dependent upon science as the driver for decisions we make for policy. Policy informed by science can really go a long way in protecting the quality of the environment that we have here. Science will remain an essential part of decision making here. Whether it's stream gauging to assist with water choices, or monitoring of the lake and streams to quantify change, or mapping of the lake floor and mountains, or modeling to better shape the future. USGS researchers are working to rapidly deliver the best science possible in the ongoing effort to protect, preserve, and restore the spectacular national treasure, Lake Tahoe.